This is a lattice. It's a set of evenly spaced points on a repeating grid. The lattice points here are represented as being at the intersections of the dotted lines. This is a simple lattice polygon. It's a polygon such that each of its corners lie on the lattice points. And it's called simple because its lines don't overlap or cross and it doesn't contain any holes. We indicate the number of lattice points on the boundary of the polygon as B and the number of interior lattice points, those contained strictly within the boundary of the polygon as I. Given a simple lattice polygon and asked to find its area, it's easy to get lost in complicated trigonometry, when actually there's a simple formula known as Pick's theorem, which applies to any simple lattice polygon. Pick's theorem, described by Georg Pick in 1899, says that the area of a simple lattice polygon A is equal to the number of interior lattice points plus half the number of boundary lattice points minus one. In this video, we'll prove this theorem. First, let's go back to 1736 to discuss Leonard Euler and the seven bridges of Königsberg. At the time, Königsberg contained four landmasses, connected by seven bridges. Mathematicians wondered if it was possible to find a route which would cross every bridge only once and return to the landmass you started from. It seemed if you refused to cross a bridge you've already crossed, there would always be a bridge you couldn't reach, or you would end up in a different place to where you started. And if you choose a route where you cross every bridge, then you would have crossed at least one bridge more than once. Euler recognised that to solve the problem, all you need to consider are the number of bridges connected to each landmass. In doing so, he created what's known as a graph. A graph is a set of vertices, the white dots, and edges which indicate the connections between the vertices. The number of edges emanating from a vertex is known as the degree of the vertex. Euler recognised that if you consider each bridge in the Königsberg problem as an edge and each landmass as a vertex, then visiting a landmass, there will be one bridge required to get there and one required to leave. This means that the degree on each vertex must always be even as bridges to and from landmasses come in pairs. And so he discovered a general property of graphs. A connected graph G contains an Eulerian path that is, a path using each edge exactly once and beginning and ending with the same vertex, if and only if the degree of each vertex of G is even. Since the degree of the graph of the Königsberg problem contains vertices with odd degrees, finding such a path is therefore impossible. Okay, so what has this got to do with Pick's theorem? Well, having worked on the properties of graphs for some time, Euler discovered an important result about planar graphs, those which can be drawn on a two-dimensional surface without any edges overlapping. Given a connected planar graph with V vertices and E edges, the number of faces F will be given by V minus E plus F equals 2. One thing to bear in mind is that the number of faces, which is normally the regions enclosed by edges, like F1 and F2 here, also includes the face outside the graph shown here by F3. This is sometimes called the infinite face, and this makes sense if it's put into context. Euler had been working on this kind of mathematics with three-dimensional polyhedra. This graph on the left is topologically equivalent to a 3D cube shown on the right, but only if we include the infinite face F6. Notice that F6 is in contact with the blue and green solid edges, which is the same as the top face of the cube. Okay, so now we're going to prove Pick's theorem, and central to this proof will be Euler's formula for planar graphs. And just to outline the proof before we start, we'll divide the lattice polygon into triangles of equal area. We'll find the number of edges in the triangulated graph, then we'll use Euler's formula to find the relationship between the number of lattice points and the number of faces. From here, Pick's theorem essentially falls straight out. We can always divide a simple lattice polygon into a number of primitive triangles, each of which have an area of one half. 
You can watch my video on primitive lattice triangles for the proof that all primitive triangles have an area of one half. Also note that to be more rigorous, we'd have to prove that we can always divide a lattice polygon into primitive triangles. I'll leave links in the description for those interested in that proof. So later on, we'll use Euler's planar graph formula. Remember, in this formula, we refer to the number of faces in a planar graph. If we imagine our triangulated polygon as a planar graph, the number of triangles is the total number of faces f minus the infinite face, so f minus 1 triangles. And since each triangle has an area of 1 half, the total area of this polygon is f minus 1 over 2. All we need to do is work out what f is. To do that, we need to know the number of edges in the polygon. So we can input that into Euler's formula. Luckily, there's an easy way of doing this. Consider a triangulated lattice polygon. How many edges are there? Well, if we break the polygon into its individual triangles, we find three edges per triangle. This implies that the number of edges might be something along the lines of 3 times f minus 1. But, as we put the polygon back together again, we find we've counted those edges on the interior twice. So, the actual equation, which relates faces and edges, is 3f minus 1 equals 2 times the number of interior edges plus the number of boundary edges. So from here, we just need to go through some algebra to get to Pick's theorem. We already have 3f minus 1 equals 2e interior plus e boundary. We can add e boundary into the bracket multiplying 2, and as long as we subtract e boundary at the end, we still end up with 1 times e boundary in total. But here we can recognise what's in the bracket. The number of interior edges plus the number of boundary edges is simply the total number of edges E. Now I'm going to move two lots of F onto the right hand side as well as adding 3 to both sides. The reason will become apparent soon. But a hint is that the E minus F in brackets will be crucial. Firstly though, I want to change this E boundary to something more useful. At this point, we can recognise that every boundary edge follows from a boundary lattice point in a loop around the polygon. This means we can replace E boundary with the number of boundary lattice points B we defined earlier. Going back to our equation then, I said that the E minus F in brackets would be crucial. Remember Euler's formula? V minus E plus F equals 2. Well, this gives E minus F equals V minus 2. Remember V is the number of nodes, which for our triangulated lattice polygon is equal to the number of lattice points. That's the number of interior lattice points I plus the number of boundary lattice points B. Tidying this up and to summarise, we find that F is equal to 2 times the number of interior lattice points plus the number of boundary lattice points minus 1. That's great, but we have one final step. Remember, Pick's theorem is all about area. And we have a relation between the number of triangles, which you may remember is f minus 1, and the area of the polygon A. Combining these equations is what leads us directly to Pick's theorem, the general formula for the area of a simple lattice polygon using only the number of interior lattice points I and the number of boundary lattice points B. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.